All right, guys, we're about to enter the minefield. M class and H class. Well, there's also L class, but uh, that doesn't really come into play much on our construction sites. So over the past couple of days, lucky me, I've been uh, engorging myself with new information. So I've scoured through all these uh, PDFs and legislations. I've done the, the heavy lifting essentially, so you guys don't have to. Now, what I've found is the legislation on RCS, which is respirable crystalline silica dust. So that is the, uh, the main sort of concern at the moment. Uh, although there are a lot of other airborne contaminants that do come into play on many work sites. And I've put references in the uh, description below. The one that helps the most with that is this standard here. It's just been updated. Uh, workplace exposure standards for airborne contaminants. There's a lot of links on a lot of pages that link you to the old ones of these. So this one uh, is the most current and up-to-date one. That gives you every single uh, chemical and airborne contaminant. And also it's TWA, which is the time weighted average, uh, which essentially is how much is okay to be in the air over an eight hour shift. So the time weighted average for respirable crystalline silica dust was 0 0.01 milligrams per metre cubed. But now, as of September, it's dropped down to 0 0.05, which puts it in the H class. Now they say that at the moment in the construction industry, M class is still acceptable to use with silica dust. But it's only a matter of time until they pull the trigger and say, because the Australian standard says M class is not capable of it. Uh, it's only a matter of time before H class is the go-to for uh, silica dust. So I guess that's something to consider when buying your next dust extraction kit. It'd be a shame to buy an M class setup, uh, have them going and then within the next six months, they say M class is now no longer okay. Like the stone benchtop industry, that is all H class. And I think construction is definitely gonna go the same way. It'd be mad not to because uh, M-Class doesn't meet the Australian standard for respirable crystalline silica dust. M-Class is fine for MDF and a host of other dusts. I've actually learnt heaps uh, over the past few days reading up about silica dust and yeah, it's a, a real eye-opener. I didn't realise how much sandstone has in it. Uh, it's like 67% and I used to sit in diggers just scraping, cutting, smashing with the cab open. So I'm going to actually go in and get an x-ray on my lungs to make sure because I've also read some pretty horrifying stories of people with silicosis. Uh, it is real guys, it's dangerous and it's everywhere so uh, you got to treat this stuff seriously. Seriously, uh, this illustration here gives you a brief summary of LM and H class. So as you can see there, L is good for things one milligram and over per meter cubed. M class in the middle there, any dusts equal to or greater than 0 0.01 milligram per meter cubed. And H class, so that's the one that is suitable for asbestos, lead dust and fumes. And as you can see there, RCS, crystalline silica is now in H class. HEPA filters, so a lot of vacuums will have HEPA filters, but that still doesn't mean they're rated as L, M or H. If they don't have certified ratings on them, it means they are just another vacuum. A HEPA filter is good, there's no doubt about it, but if they're not rated, it means the rest of the machine is not up to the task, so don't be fooled by HEPA. It's good to identify all the airborne contaminants that you might come into contact with on your site and refer to this PDF again. Check out what the TWA is and that'll give you an idea of what dust extraction you need for that particular contaminant. H-Class needs to be tested at least once every 12 months to stay certified. The filters, people often worry that you have to replace the expensive filters quite often, but that's not the case. So if it doesn't get a lot of use and it still passes the annual test, you don't have to replace the filter until the suction doesn't work properly anymore. So filters aren't as big a deal as many people might think. It's always as clear as mud, this sort of stuff. It's, it's really hard to get a definitive answer, especially in Queensland, because we seem to have two rules coming from the same governing body at the same time. It's, it's pretty tricky, guys. So I'd always recommend, especially after listening to a lot of the horror stories about silicosis and asbestosis, it's always good to lean towards the higher side of safety, obviously. Now we've got a lot of attachments 
uh, that we can use with multiple tools. I've specifically picked ones that actually hook up to an external vacuum purely because you know you can always put a H-class vacuum onto these particular um, accessories. So that's a grinding shroud for a, a seven inch grinder. They come in all different sizes. Uh, this one here, you hook your vacuum up to it. It suctions onto a wall or floor and then you can drill holes and uh, the dust goes straight down through into your vacuum. There's a few different types of them ones. This is a drilling one as well. Obviously with a bigger hole for doing uh, hole saws and bigger uh, rotary hammers in concrete, blah, blah, blah. Now we got the grinding shroud. This is the cutting shroud. You hook your grinder up in there. You can access into the blade there. This also swings open. You can follow your blade cuts on the front there. Vacuum goes on there. If you've got different vacuums, hoses, there's adapters and everything. Obviously, these uh, come in all different brands, you know, if whatever brand you got, Makita, uh, DeWalt, Milwaukee, whatever you might have, Metabo is huge on dust extraction. Uh, they all have their own uh, models and variants of these things. So this is a DeWalt. Instead of suctioning that to the wall, install your drill onto here and then you can so there's a lot of handy attachments. This is only a small amount of them. There's way more uh, that you can use for specific tasks. So this one is same sort of premise as these. It suctions onto the wall. If it's got a steel shroud in there that you can push against, like a sacrificial shroud. Right, so long story short, there's nothing simple about dust extraction. There are quite a few different options when it comes to H-class, M-class, L-class, and uh, you know even just normal shop vacs. We, uh, we have quite an extensive range of uh, dust extraction. Yeah, there's plenty there to look at, guys. And if you're not already on the, you know, at least M or H class, you should definitely have a flick through them links and arm yourself with a bit more relevant information because it's, it's the, uh, the time of the season, guys. I'm sure you guys have plenty of questions, so uh, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll, I'll scale through them and make sure I get them answered for you. I have done a lot of learning over the last few days, so... I'll do my best to answer your questions as accurately as possible. Check out our dust extraction at tradetools.com. And until the next video, guys, have a good one. Stay safe. Don't breathe any of that silica in. It's real. It's dangerous. Trust me. Dangerous. Thanks, guys.